three friends, thousands of movies, a million TV shows, and an infinite number of opinions. This is Big Screen, Little Screen, and everything in between. It rhymes. Every week, we review new releases and spotlight an older film that you just might want to add to your watch list. So hold on to your butts, because here are your hosts, Francesca, Frank, and Jeremy. Welcome back to Big Screen, Little Screen, and Everything in Between. Uh, we have another exciting episode here for you guys tonight. How are you guys doing? So excited to be here. Yeah, I'm pumped. All right, guys. We are going to start our episode, as always, with a question. Uh, today is the 11... No, 10-year... 10-year? 11th year anniversary um of the release of scream 4 which depending on the day you ask me might be my favorite of the sequels in that franchise that my my order for that franchise changes constantly so in that spirit though i thought we would talk about our favorite sequels of all time so frank what are you going with uh sin city 2 a dame to kill for please no jokes here okay <laughs> but i, I have jokes I, I did not sign up for that for this podcast <laughs> right. yeah okay this will that be not, very dry that is for the not rest of my writer no, no more funny talk okay so we're gonna go with the fo- golf voice for the rest of the episode <laughs> very <laughs> monotone we're gonna very be dramatic we're gonna be like the parks and recreation yeah. uh radio thoughts host. for your thoughts <laughs> You guys just do a show. I'll sit here and listen. <laughs> anyway, all right, Frank. Seriously, what is your favorite sequel of all time? So this is really... or we'll accept. We did say we'll accept a prequel as well. So can I give one of each then? Sure. Wrath of Khan is probably my favorite sequel, just because it shatters Star Trek: The Motion Picture in every yeah. sense of the word. You got Wrath... a lot of love for that one. I love Wrath of Khan. I think it's great. And prequel Rogue One. Which... Rogue One is fucking fantastic rogue one is probably my favorite star wars film of all time i rewatched it very recently and i was just reminded the whole time like how phenomenal it is and anybody who is in the camp that does not love that movie can just go right to hell uh jen urso <clears throat> is without a doubt my favorite character i know that you're a cassian fan and yeah. k2so is sarcastic bot 3000 as jeremy likes to call him it's just <laughs> fantastic how is that not what his job title should be yeah Yeah. exactly i'm actually quite surprised that you went with this though because i had another one that i thought for sure you were gonna pick i no surprise whatsoever like the moment we said prequel oh it's rogue one yeah the moment you said i could say a prequel i think even i don't think you would have thought wrath of khan though for no i thought you were gonna say war for the planet of the apes oh i do love war for the planet of the apes but that's the third Spoiler alert i still it's a sequel spoiler Uh, alert Hint, what? Hint. Uh-oh. Oh. What? Is that... <laughs> it was, maybe. <laughs> I do. It's a, it's a top two. It, Cause do you, cause that's, of that's all three my... of them, do you love War the most? I do. Yeah. yeah. I To me, they grow in their quality, in my opinion, because yeah. of the, the people involved with the film, right? And I know, like a lot of people, have a lot of love for the James Franco version, right? And what fuck James Franco? What that one? The fact that it relaunched the franchise, though, like in a positive way. Um, you know, I'm a Matt Reeves fan, so I'm not yeah. mad that you brought it up. But no, I mean, Wrath I mean, of Khan. It, it, just... it makes sense your picks, but I just in my mind, I that's where I thought you were gonna go. Yeah. No, I. Uh, it's a. I it, guess I don't know my husband very well, but it, it's a very <laughs> solid contender in the list and. You know, if we had more, I'm sure at some point it will be a spotlight film when I get to pick it. Oh, I'm so sure. When we get to fe- something that features like CGI or makeup, because Andy Serkis and that is just He phenomenal. should have been nominated for an Oscar ages ago for his motion capture work. But I mean, especially his work as Caesar. That or, or Gollum. Like there's yeah. just, there's not enough that gets recognized. Him and Sean Gunn kind of run that world, but there's more people that do it and they deserve to be properly recognized by the Academy because of their work. You're absolutely right. Do you want me to go or do you want time, Jeremy? Oh, I, I already knew my answer, but we've already discussed it. But is it going to, is your answer war? No, no. I'm just kidding. Okay. It's actually before midnight. <laughs> 
Don't laugh. That's on my list of honorable mentions. It's not even on my list of. You haven't even it's seen It's not it. even on your list of movies right. you've seen. It's not on my list. Yeah. Exactly. You haven't even seen any of those movies. Before, after, during. I don't no. care. They're great movies. Uh, um, no, War for is definitely up there. Yeah. Um, I'm in that age gap where too young to have seen the originals, you know, mm-hmm. in their original time frame. Um, so for me, Planet of the Apes was the Mark Wahlberg monstrosity. Oh, yeah. So bad. But it's funny because me as like an 11 year old or however old I was when those movies came out, I was like, this is really fun. Here's the thing about that movie <laughs> is it was fun. And okay, it's a good movie. You owned until, it. Un- in that in that pile of DVDs that I went through the other day, it was in there. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh huh. Anyway, so it's a fun movie. I enjoyed it. <laughs> but the funny thing is, watching the new new ones, yeah, just makes it seem oh, this is what it could have been, right. or this is what it should have been all yeah. along. Yeah, it's like after the third attempt, they finally got it right. Yeah, because they are all three of them are are so good. All three are fantastic. Uh, but with that said, um, you know that. Another one I was really thinking heavily on was uh, Indiana Jones: Last Crusade. That's a great one. My favorite of Indiana Jones. That's I'm, a really great one. I'm with you one. there. Yeah, it goes three, one, two, four for me. What four? Huh? I don't understand. The one that just got done filming. Oh, okay, I haven't, I haven't seen, seen it yet, seen it yet so yeah. that's why it's last. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Are you um, not getting? Oh, that's another great joke sorry, that you were just. I just I went right over wow. my head for a second, my because my wow. brain went somewhere else. So you see, Francesca, <laughs> there are existing four movies. The fourth one is called The Crystal Skull, but real fans of Indiana Jones do not acknowledge that as a movie because it sucked so much dick. You know, they just so recently bad. wrapped filming on the fifth one. The fourth, fourth one slash fourth. Yes. <laughs> Crystal Skull is an absolute. It's a train wreck. I even I tried rewatching movie. it last year just to see like if they, I was too harsh on it or something. No, but, no, no. They yeah. they undid a great trilogy and just destroyed everything great about Indiana Jones in one movie. Yeah, which is why I can't Alien. acknowledge it. Aliens. I used to. Fine. I think when it first came out, I wanted to be kinder to it, and I was like, "It's not a bad movie. It's just a bad Indiana Jones movie." But then, like, wh- even mm. when I rewatched it, I was like, "No, this is just not good." It's a bad movie. Yeah, all around bad. Yeah, I have a lot that I could pick here, and it's well, really... yeah, you're not alone. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard for me. I feel like my answer would change any day depending on like when you ask me. I mean, there's a lot of great sequels within the horror genre. I mean, we've talked about the Scream franchise. Um, the sequels to Ouija and Annabelle are also both fantastic and Luigi? way better than like their... Mario and Luigi? Ouija. Oh. Like a Ouija board. Um, I have... Is that Lou's last name? <laughs> I am not shy about my love for Hellboy 2, The Golden Army. I think that movie is one of the best comic book movies ever made, and I am obsessed with it, and it's fantastic don't look at me like that jeremy i am not lying let the record state i am looking at her like that <laughs> duly um, noted the and best also comic book movies of all time i yeah yeah the end period exclamation point point made mic drop walk out the building you say that with such confidence but 99 percent of people will be like Is she crazy I don't think so. There's a lot of love for that movie. Not for best comic book movie ever. Whatever. No, no, no. no this this is not a whatever. This is a... Mm. Nope. Nope. Yep. The end. It's in my top five. Uh, also, Magic Mike XXL. I mean, come on, ladies. Who else is with me? That movie is a great time. And the Joe Manganiello uh, Backstreet Boys scene will... At the gas station? That's pretty funny. It is forever one of the greatest scenes in movie history. How much do I owe you? <laughs> <laughs> um, plus, Mamma Mia 2 is so great and just even better than... You're like 0 for 3 at this point. I know, I know, I know. I There's two that I could pick here that I... <laughs> <laughs> I know, better than any I know. Of those. I've listed so many. Um, one that I'm like really on the fence about not picking because it's not going to be my choice, but I really love it is Paddington 2. It's one of the best movies ever I, made. I have an honest question for you. Yeah. There are so, so many great trilogies. How are you not getting any of them? Because I have my own taste and. 
I will not apologize for it. Your taste is bad. Your taste is bad. You just My don't taste like. Is great. You don't like fun. So, have you even seen the Paddington movies? I've seen Either both one of them. them. They're great. They're great. Yeah, but they're not a top sequel of all time. Uh, Paddington Two is one of the greatest movies ever made. <laughs> ever made. It's a in fun, the history of cinema. It's a fun family flick. I'll, I'll give you that. Hugh Grant is great. Yes. It's a fun Hugh Grant family flick. It's Oscar a nomination. it's a perfect family movie. I'll give you that. It's it's in by no means not even my top two hundred of s- sequels ever. Well, I guess you just don't like fun. Anyway, I don't think you're gonna like be mad at me for my you. actual pick, though. I don't know. I'm already mad. So <laughs> I, I have two postscripts after you're done. So let's wrap this up because I want to talk about my movies <laughs> <Okay>. again. <laughs> I'm gonna go a Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. <sighs> I like Ghost Protocol. It's probably my favorite Mission Impossible movie in the franchise. It revitalized the franchise. It did. It. Every time I watch it, I think it is so fantastic. Why are you huffing and puffing over there? The, I, thought, the, I thought you were going to pick something good and you just... You seriously? Get... You're going to give me crap about Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol of all the movies? Mission that Impossible... scene where he is hanging off of that building, it gives oh, wait, me a wait. goddamn heart attack. the sandstorm, attack. yeah. The, the scene where Tom Cruise is hanging off a building, was that in one, two, three, four, five? Oh, it's in all of them. <laughs> You know, a little more you specific know than the that. scene that I'm the, talking about. The Burj Khalifa. I know. The sandstorm's coming. That again, gives me a heart attack every fucking again, time I watch it. Mission Impossible is... A fantastic a, franchise. An a, a average to above average franchise. Blow me, Jeremy. Seriously? No, it's, it's perfectly serviceable, but literally forgettable. I don't remember anything. From, I've seen all the movies at least once or twice. Couldn't tell you which one is which. I think we've even discussed this before, how I cannot tell any of them apart because they're all interchangeable. And they I run think together. you can make that case about some of them, but uh, no, because two has such a distinct style, thanks to John Woo. Three sucks. John sucks. Woo? But then, then you get... Sorry, J.J. Abrams. I you love you normally. You could maybe say that like Rogue Nation and Fallout blend together, but I don't think you can say that about Ghost Protocol. For me, none of the movies stand out on their own well that's for you and again i don't yeah. just like any of them i yeah. liked all of them at the time i watched them once i'm done i'm done i've moved on nothing like is retained i mean look like i said my if you ask me this question tomorrow i could probably give you a different answer because it we, just depends on my tomorrow? mood yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so right we'll now, be back I'm, I'm <laughs> with going... a new intro tomorrow <laughs> I'm going Mission Impossible, and I'm not going to be mad about it. And my Mission Impossible is getting Francesca to like good movies. Oh my god, I'm gonna vice right right back at you, right back at you. I named mine. You both agree with mine, so apparently I'm not in the wrong here. So, um, all right, I'm going back to my postscript now. I'm ending this argument. Two things that I just saw on a list was was that enough uh, contentious uh, discussion (laughs) for our listeners? For our listeners, who who liked the banter? Was that good for you guys? Um, Two, I want to mention. Oh, sorry, I have to cut you off. No, go ahead. That's 100 percent real. This is not. Oh no, not playing it up. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) she just picked a topic that's happening. That is a genuine conversation that Jeremy and I have on the regular. So, (laughs) I want my animated option. Toy Story three. Really? Yeah, Toy Story 3 as an animated film. That one, well, almost broke me. I think it's perfect. That scene at the end with the... uh, The, the, They gave up? Yeah, exactly. They're ready to die? The give up scene. It's a tough scene. And then him leaving Woody behind for her, knowing that Woody deserves to be played with and not just sit on a shelf. Mm -hmm. Two huge monumental moments for people who have not gone to therapy (laughs) over here. (laughs) Uh, so it's just something where Pixar figured out a while ago. It's like, it's not just about like a bad guy anymore. It's, you know, there's, there's lots of hug, lots of bear who was a great villain, but you know, it's about like actual adult and real life problems that they were tackling as well. And we see that more with like turning red inside out some of their newer films, soul, where it's not just like an actual bad guy. They're just trying to help humanity out, yeah. be better people, as opposed to just having like a, a, a villain involved. And then my other one, uh, this qualifies as the first movie was in black and white. The second one was in color, and that is The Color of Money, which I absolutely love as a pool that's film. A solid. And it's a fantastic movie. See, that's a good classic movie that I didn't really care for. Couldn't it. really argue. Really? See, yeah. I'm the crazy one here. 
Yeah, I'm going to have to go with Jeremy on that one. <laughs> I know, because you love that movie, and you had me watch it. And I remember watching it and going, that's fine. But I didn't want to like disappoint you. It, I mean, different strokes for different folks. But, I mean, Paul Newman, Tom Cruise, Forrest Whitaker, Mary Elizabeth, Master Antonio. I think it's a phenomenal yeah. movie. And, oh, John Turturro. Love it. Absolutely. Well, and I can it. even make the argument, I mean, getting ahead of ourselves for John Wick. John Wick 2 and 3, great movies. Yep. They are great movies. Absolutely, very right. good sequels. That's yeah. a, that's a, a a trilogy that doesn't lose ground. No. Mm-mm. So those could be up there on my list. Not like Hangover Three. They kind of that one slipped. Uh, God, yeah. We're, we don't need to talk about those those sequels. I wish I wish Hangover Two and Three could have been so much better. I still watch them. I yeah. still laugh my ass yeah. off. I like I like Two. I just, Two's like a dark comedy that I just hate the lack of. Just repeating the same story in a different location. Yeah, okay. I wish they had come up with something a little more unique. Yeah, but bring, I'll still watch. I'll still laugh. Yeah, bring bring Justin Bartha into the fold. He's funny. Yeah, but you know, to that to that point, I really enjoy Hangover you No know, Two and Three, but they're not great movies. Which is kind of what I think about you know, Mission Impossible. They're good. I enjoy them, but they're not great. Oh, I think they're great movies. With uh, but color I, money is garbage. I didn't say it was garbage. I just said it wasn't for you may me. As well have. Oh gosh. Now who's being dramatic? Francesca. <laughs> All right. Well, let's dive into our show with uh, some of the new stuff that we watched and see if we have any thoughts there. Ambulance. Frank, you and I went to see this last week. The new Michael Bay. Well, Michael Bay being Michael Bay here. <laughs> did, did the shit blow up? His, his, his uh, new cinematic experience starring Jake Gyllenhaal and Yaya Abdul-Mateen. What did you think of it? We should not let Michael Bay have drones. That's what I think. <laughs> man, oh man, there were some dizzying film sequences yeah. in this where we were like, Jeremy, we were going down one building with the drone, and then we cut to another downshot of a different building on a different block. No warning, no nothing. We're just like going down, and then boom, and then it's a different building, and you're like, what just happened? It literally felt like a roller coaster. Oh, the movie version it, of a roller coaster? Yeah. It's, I could That's not cool. imagine doing a 40X for this film. Oh, God. It no. would be. Uh, stylistically insane. Uh, I don't know who his editor is, but all together, it works. It really does. It is tanked at the box office. Uh, it is not doing well with fans, but it's got a great rating from critics. It's like in the eighties on Rotten Tomatoes right now. It's I think the rare are... action movie that has a reverse score. Uh, that's what I think. People are kind of starved, or at least the critics are for you know the those of us who. A, love movies and who are there every weekend we're just so starved for something that is not part of an existing franchise and you know comic book based or whatever that when you get something like this i mean we've we've all had our moments of making fun of michael bay i get it michael bay is who he is but at the same time he gives us some really entertaining stuff and ambulance is right up there amongst some of his other best i think I mean, is it Bad Boys? For me, no, right? But I mean, I hold that film in like Speaking of which, though, they there are there is a moment in Ambulance where two characters are directly talking about other movies Michael Bay has directed. <laughs> Very meta. Yeah. Yeah. They they reference The Rock Transformers and Bad Boys. Yeah. Not Transformers? Not Transformers. Not Transformers, no. <laughs> but uh it's great that he gives himself nods because nobody else will. Yeah. Right. Cuz Michael Bay's like, I like that movie. Let's reference that. Yeah. I understand the love and the hate for Michael Bay. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Like Mission Impossible. I enjoy his movies. Yeah. They're not great movies. But I maintain that Pearl Harbor is a fantastic movie. I maintain that it is a good movie. I'm somewhere in between you two. I just think that it is like 45 minutes too long. Like, there are definitely some things I'm like, okay, we didn't need any of that. I've just never understood the hate that that movie gets. Never. That I don't understand. Again, it's a good movie. Yeah. I feel like they should be shown at, like, basic I won't try to fight with you on the (laughs) level of love for Pearl Harbor. But, no, I I get what you're saying about Michael Bay. Yeah. I feel like that should be shown for, like, basic training because it definitely makes me feel patriotic. Like, the shots and (laughs) the flags and the standing and the the score in the background. Like How dare they come for us? It gets you jazzed up for America. Alec Baldwin's always, like, fun. Him and Kim Coates, shout out. That's a deep pull for the names there. It's a great role. Anyway, going back to Ambulance, 
it's a really fun movie. Also, Jake Gyllenhaal gives a completely unhinged performance, and it is great. See, I like unhinged Gyllenhaal. Yeah. He is, like, clearly he, on cocaine or something. Like His character. His I've character, seen, yeah. I've seen him unhinged before. Yes. And that's, to me, that's his, him at his best. But it, and it's unhinged. I don't like nice Jake Gyllenhaal. It, like, oh, that's Bubble Boy. That, yeah. <laughs> but other than that, I, I do like Love and Other Drugs. I like Love and Other Drugs, too. But, like, I love, like, Nightcrawler. Yeah. And, obviously, um, Southpaw, which I think is yeah. an underrated film and a lot of people don't talk about it as a boxing movie. But I what really was the Marine one he did? But he's funny. Jarhead? Jarhead. That was eh. I, I really once really liked like that one. I didn't like it. I like Brothers more than Jarhead. I like yeah. Brothers a lot, too. But Gyllenhaal's funny in this, too. Like, he's clearly psychotic, but also really funny. See, that I would like. Yeah. yeah. There's I, a lot I, of I dry humor. psychotic, funny Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah. And an ambulance. On a roller coaster. So, I mean, that's... You're speaking my love. I, I really think you're going to like it when you oh, yeah. see it. So... Everything you said has me hooked. Yeah. As long as you don't say it's as good as, or not as good as, Mission Impossible <laughs> 2. <laughs> wow. So much hate. Now, Jeremy, moving on, you wanted to talk about The Walking Dead. So... Tell us about it. I just kind of made a, a passing comment to you the other day. Yeah. Is this the end? Was that the finale? No, finale? they're doing. They're doing. It's three sections. Okay. This is the the, the finale of the second section. Got it. Okay. So it's it's like Ozark, where we're in part one of part two of the end yeah, of part so three. This is. Yeah. They just finished wrap. They just wrapped the finishing of the of the yes. production uh, two it. weeks ago, I think. Yeah. Um, so we are at the finale of part two of three. So I believe that means there's six more episodes. And you have stayed up with it the whole time. I never stopped, yeah. Okay. Um, and I, I was watching the other night. I, did, I watched the, the finale. I texted you guys. I said, man, I really wish you guys hadn't given up. Yeah. This season is it's Been really good. something. So I know they've lost. They've had a huge drop off since yeah. the other days. Yeah. And I get it. I mean, th- some of the seasons did get a little. Jump the shark. Meh. Yeah. It's it's way in the future now. It's Maggie's son, Herschel, is like 10. Wow. Oh, wow. So okay. we're at least 12, 13, or I guess about 10 years. So how old is Judy now? She's like 12 or 13. Wow. She's, and Carl is, oh, wait, never mind. Too um, soon. That was where I stopped watching. So, yeah, the next couple of years after that are kind of hit or miss. Yeah. This last one is really brought together, and... There was a big kind of climactic Negan Maggie. Yeah, I I read a little bit that that was coming. I don't really know anything about it. Just it, that they've he's been around the whole time. Yeah, this whole ten years for like for eight of them he was in jail. Right, and they finally let him out, and he's kind of did some other stuff, and now he's off on his own because he couldn't coexist with Maggie. Right, not that he wouldn't, she couldn't. Right, which I get. She should for obvious reasons. Yeah, but there was a pretty critical things happening now that they're kind of make it's just okay it's almost worth watching well i mean there's a part of me that wants to go back and i've honestly thought about going back because i loved those first few seasons so much you could probably skip i don't even know what number it is but right after you stopped you could probably skip three or four seasons and yeah. go to maybe the last three or four okay the whisperers on have they brought back that sense of real danger? Because I felt like some of that was re- was starting to miss after. So the problems in the newer episodes is more. There's still zombies, right? Walkers, whatever, whatever community calls them. Yeah. But the problem, like it's always been, the biggest enemy is man. Yes. But there are actual like civilizations now, like cities, yeah, that are living and thriving. But is there that that sense gov- again of like government. anybody could drop dead, like anybody can be killed, anybody's a target? Oh yeah. Okay. I mean, if you look at the cast, that's that. It's not the original cast. I mean, oh no, I know, but it, I, they didn't just go off on a cruise and. It just, I felt well, like some of, of that, like, suspenseful tone started to really lag. It did, but this is where the new season gets better because okay. there's a new sense. But it's, I can't give too much away, but there's just, it's, okay. It's a lot going on. Yeah. Well, if anybody out there has, has also kept up with uh, Walking Dead, do you think, like Jeremy, that Frank and I should uh, go back and give it another go? 
I think a couple of, a couple seasons. Yeah. I'd try. I'd have to try to figure out pinpoint where. Okay. Because there are some that are. It's the same yeah. shit for three seasons. Yeah. Well, that's where they lost a lot of folks. Frank, you watched a movie on Netflix, was it? Called Metal Lords? I did watch a movie called Metal Lords on Netflix. Tell us about it. Metal Lords is a, not quite a coming of age film, but in that like ballpark. So they had me at that. Mm -hmm. It is about two two teenage boys in high school who try to form a metal band. One of them plays drums. The other one is the singer and lead guitar player. And they are on the search for a bassist. And it has not been an easy search because they want someone who not can who doesn't just play the bass, but also like Slap of the bass. Feels <laughs> the metal, like it lives the metal lifestyle and does those types of things. And one of the the lead singer character is very abrasive with humanity, doesn't do well with So he's metal. He is. But to the point that it's like he doesn't even want to have a life. And he's happy with just like one friend and being hated when he doesn't necessarily have to be. So it's about like him trying to learn his way through the world and figure out what he needs to be. It's, I think it's a a well-made film. There's a lot of really quippy jokes. One of the characters is played by Jaden Martell, Mm -hmm. who was in It and did a very good job in that movie. Brett Gelman plays the dad of one of the people of one of the characters. He's the brother-in-law in Fleabag. For people who don't yeah. know, he's the the stand-up comedian there. Joe Manganiello's in it, right? He is. He has a he, he, yeah. You have like a one-track mind. <laughs> I do. <laughs> no, but you ready? He plays the head of a psych ward. Yeah, sure. It's, he was on Ellen this week talking about it. And I saw a YouTube thing. That's why I know. it's it's great. It's a great little cameo for him. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I want people to watch it when they get a chance. And uh, I think I might even make you like sit down and like hunker through because I think you'll like some of the jokes and some of the music and stuff like that. And you can find out more about like what metal is. And it's not just like loud screaming into things and what they're trying to. <laughs> the real question is, is it better than Paddington 2? <laughs> Nothing is better than Paddington 2. I can't say that it's better than Paddington 2. <laughs> there you go. But they do find a pretty awesome tripod member for their for their band at the end so well, that's I, good i know who it is and what it is yeah. so which have, makes it funny have you ended yeah. up watching it yet i've not watched it yet but i know yeah how yeah. they get there yeah frank you and i also started the new prime show outer range uh which dropped two episodes this week starring josh brolin imogen poots lily taylor and noah reed from schitt's creek jeremy do you know anything about this show i do not okay it is, it's like a sci-fi Yellowstone. <laughs> yeah. From what I gather of Yellowstone anyway. <laughs> Watch sci-fi, I've not watched Yellowstone. Yeah, they are, Josh Brolin's family has this huge, you know, farm, cattle ranch. Space farm. In Wyoming. Drops I, down. <laughs> I think we're leading up to the fact that it's a wormhole, because it, we don't want to give away. How warm is it? Wormhole. <laughs> worm. <laughs> worm. <laughs> Not warm. <laughs> Speaking of domain. I don't know if it's cold in there or night. It could be a warm hole. A warm, know. warm hole. <laughs> there you go. Let's try to say that three times fast. Huh? Warm, I did it. Warm, warm. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. It's, I, I have, no, we're two episodes in. I have no idea what's happening, but I'm in. Like, it's really funky this seems to be one of those shows where we might get a better than it should have been because of the cast involved probably it's you know what's funny is that it's created by this guy brian watkins who seemingly has no other credits like i checked him out on imdb and there was nothing there so i was like where did this guy come from so you're Um, saying there's a chance (laughs) and it doesn't seem to be based on pre-existing material so I I don't it know. Came out of a wor- <laughs> <laughs> a wormhole. Yes, exactly. I just inception that, folks. <laughs> but it's yeah, it's a funky sci-fi show. But I think if you like that genre, maybe check it out. It's it, I'll, it I'll definitely say this. seems to be a slow burn so far. I'll say this for these two episodes, I prefer this than Cowboys versus Aliens. Well, there you go. That's not really that bold of a comment. Yeah, I mean, no. looking back on Cowboys and Alley. I'm just thinking, well, I mean, you could have just looked at Olivia Wilde for two hours and been okay. But I mean, this True. is... That would have been a better movie. It, it might it not might have been. It would have been. But yeah, no, this... I just say that because it's Cowboys and sci-fi. Yeah. I don't know. There's, there's something. There's something here. Yeah. 
I think it's got some some serious potential to be a great show. So I'm I'm hoping. Is it one of those shows where it has to stick the landing? I I to mean, make it. Yeah, and like I said, we're only two episodes in, so it's a little early. But I I yes, I'm gonna. I'll wait till three or four. Yeah, we'll let you know. I also, I know you guys are big, I, I'm a big fan of stand-up. I know you guys are as well. Mm-hmm. Watched it on Netflix as well. Ronnie Ching. I have not seen Ronnie Ching's new stand-up oh. yet. <laughs> I just, good? I love his delivery. So, yeah. yeah. So do I. So, I really like his delivery. It's very funny. You guys specifically <laughs> will enjoy uh, Specifically? It. There's a lot of jokes written for you guys. Yeah. All right. I'm well, here for it. We can check that I out. I feel like all jokes are written for me because I laugh at just about it. <laughs> In fact, it's funny. There's some really yeah. funny stuff. We're going to wrap up with our Moon Knight? weekly recap of, of Moon, Moon Knight. Knight. Jeremy, did you catch Moon this episode? Moon Knight. I don't Moon know Knight. why I just sang that. <laughs> <laughs> Moon Knight. There's nothing like musical about that show. <laughs> I know. I just decided to sing the title. Uh, yeah, I saw it last night. How do we feel about episode three? It's going somewhere. It is. Don't know where. I'm into it. Is, do we now have a third personality? In Apparently. In... Yeah. Another person with a suit access? It's, it's not oh. Mark and it's not Steven. How many suits are left? Like, I don't know. And are we going to acknowledge, I mean, who are these gods in the Marvel Universe? Yeah. Are they Eternals? Are they inhuman? What, who are they? It's a good point because... We're, it's like we're they're these Marvel ancient canon. gods, but and they've decided that they were never going to mess Eternals. with now, and they're not going to like interfere with the doings of man, which is the Eternals. Yeah, we already have the Eternals, so who are these fuckers? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good question. I mean, just but, the comic book reader in me wants to know. This. Solid question. I mean, that's the thing too is that we've gotten so much from these great series, but I haven't seen the films or the larger universe anyway take any of those stories forward yet. Right. Well, but or, we'll, we have Multiverse of Madness coming. We do, so it's possible yeah. that we'll get I, some I movement think there. for me, they need to answer the question, who are they? Since we've had Eternals and since this is supposed to be part of the greater Marvel universe, right? who are these gods? Because yeah. there are no gods mm-hmm. in Marvel. Thor is a god, but he's not a god. Right. He's an Asgardian. Yeah. How, how many? Uh, how many different mythologies? Oh, do we have? Are there Greek gods in? Yes. In there's there's Zeus. in Marvel as well. We have Zeus. Yeah. Cool. There. There's Hercules. That's right. Hercules. Hercules. <laughs> so yeah, every mythology at some point or other has become a comic book character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm sure there's, there's a Kung Fu Buddha somewhere, for all well, I know. Well, Shang-Chi and his father and things like that, the Ten Rings and those legends. Yeah. To make it satisfying. I think, I think that makes sense. And I, like I said, I I, I want to see the, the larger film universe start to incorporate some more from what we're getting in the shows. Well, yeah. I mean, the movies need to incorporate the shows and the shows need to have, you know, cameos from major characters. Yeah. I mean, ha- you know, have the, Thor there, drop in on Egypt. There I mean, have been some major consequences from the TV shows, right. especially Loki, that we haven't caught up to. Right. So. I think it would do good to have, you know, a random, you know, again, Thor dropping on Egypt. Hey, what's yeah. going on over here? Why is this? Yeah. Why is the whole sky going back ten thousand years? <laughs> I think. What's going on? Yeah, is this another like time stone thing? Does Strange know about this? Like with the Eye of Agamotto? That's a good like, question. Again, these yeah. are all. What? When is this happening? Either have it connected or don't have it connected. But yeah, if it's saying it's connected, well, I need to see the connection. Well, <laughs> you know, then connect it. Damn it. Previously, they were able to wrap it up because it was one movie multiverse, right? right? But now that we've got the live action Sony films that are incorporated with their characters. We have into the spider verse. We had what if now we have the TV shows. It's a lot to remember the continuity and put it together. And I'm wondering if it's too big, maybe, maybe multiverse of madness will like spin everything off and let them kind of go their own way. Yeah. In a way they kind of just everything like, has their own earth and just, exactly. Yeah. Just give it their own, like we're all connected, treatment. but we're not connected, but not really. Just kidding. <laughs> it's kind of what they did when they remade the star Trek franchise. If you think about it, right. Just create a whole new timeline. So that way we can make all new characters with all new backstories with the same names. Right. So this is kind of the same thing that could be happening. I could be wrong, but it, uh, otherwise, it's going to take years. Once you have a multiverse to get resolution, 
everything is possible and nothing matters. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see what they do with Doctor Strange and then kind of make my decision on how happy I am. Because you got to figure out, now there's a multiverse. And yeah. An infinity number of planets yeah. and timelines. There's going to be a lot of Tony Starks out there. That yep. is very true. I mean, so not, nothing is ever yeah. permanent. Nothing is ever... Yeah. Nothing... It, nothing is final. It puts... It's less... Everything's less important. When... You're right. Yeah. So... All right. Well, with all of that, we're going to take a little bit of a break and then we're going to come back with our spotlight film of the week. My choice, John Wick. Dun, dun, dun. Baba Yaga. You're listening to Big Screen, Little Screen, and everything in between with your hosts, Francesca, Frank, and Jeremy. And we're back. Part two of episode 10. I'm trying to come up with fun little intros when we come back from break. <laughs> Is that not working? Jeremy's looking at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about John Wick, guys. I was tasked with picking a movie that I was very adamant against seeing and then came around to and ultimately really love. And so I went with John Wick, which is a movie that when I first saw the trailer for it, I thought it looked super dumb. Not because the guy was killing everybody over his dead dog, because he should do that. But... <laughs> um, Justifiable homicide for yeah, you? Yes, exactly. But I, I don't know. The trailer just looked really bad. The dialogue looked really janky. And I was like, that movie looks really stupid and like a direct-to-DVD like action generic flick. And then it came out and I was hearing amazing things. And so I finally gave in and watched it. Now I'm obsessed with the John Wick franchise and I love it so much. And I really enjoyed rewatching it. It's kind of funny because I was also late to the John Wick party. A lot. Everybody was. And once I saw it, I was like, whoa. Yeah. I, this is one of those movies that really built from word of mouth. Um, yeah. It did not have a huge box office. It Its highest was number two was when it opened. It came in number two to Ouija, of all things, which um, we that, talked about. That's Lou. <laughs> Um, the first Ouija, which is actually a very not good movie. It came out in October of 2014. Its budget was somewhere between 20 to 30 million, which is actually a lot more than I thought. Domestically, it did 43 million. Worldwide, it did 86 million. But compare that to, I mean, as word of mouth built for this movie and as it came out on DVD and more, and it, you know, it hit streaming and more and more people were able to watch it. When we finally got John Wick 2, that movie did 92 million domestically and 171 million worldwide. And then we got the third one, 170 million domestically and 327 million I was worldwide. Saying, two seemed low for yeah. coming off of you know, how good the first one was. Exactly. I mean, these movies have just keep doing more and more money and getting more and more successful. Is, is there a four in the works? There is. We're getting it in <laughs> 2023, folks. I am excited. Yeah, I'm, it's one of those things where it just keeps building like you talked about. I think four has got to be the end, though, right? With where I three ends see up. see where else. They, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want the them world. to like run it into the ground either because like they've con they've kept a consistent quality. John Wick, 10 with Vin Diesel and yeah, The Rock God, and I hope Brie not. Larson and... Yeah. <laughs> Helen Mirren. Who else is missing? We'll get them all in there. Charlize Theron. Jason yeah. Statham. Yeah. Anyway, Frank, how did you feel rewatching this one? I got. I felt the same way after I saw it the first time. That's just a lot of fun. Yeah. Just left thinking that was well choreographed. That was well executed. There's not a thing that's really out of place in the movie one way or the other. And I just thoroughly enjoy it from start to finish it really has revitalized the entire action genre well and i even revitalized it it's Just it's redefined it. it yeah um again i'm obviously watching again this week i only saw john wick one one time mm -hmm. i've seen two and three you know since then but i've only seen john wick the one time and it was probably late 2015 yeah so six years ago 
Um, having watched it again uh, very recently, <laughs> I actually liked it more now than I remember liked it before. Really? So to me, it actually got better. It even grew on you. Not that I did like the first time, but I really yeah. did. It's just kind of knowing more about the, about the world they live in now mm -hmm. makes it that much better to me. Oh, yeah. Where we know where we're going with the yeah. continental. And right. This, they do like, a great society. job in this one of really laying the groundwork for that world. Because initially, I remember being confused. Like, why? who is this place? Why? What? What's going on? Because it didn't make a whole lot of right. sense. As we get to two and three, it all comes together. So watching one again with that that knowledge of this whole underworld yeah to me makes it more enjoyable i'm not, I'm not worried about why what, what's the, what's this gold coin what right who, why is this guy letting people kill people in the law none of it yeah. makes sense yeah having watched it again yeah it's changed the way you know choreography you know the whole term gung fu yeah you know, came from this movie yeah it it definitely revitalized the whole action genre and i was thinking about it and if you look at you know keanu reeves as an actor mm-hmm before John Wick, he was obviously had great movies. You no know, Point Break, Matrix. Yeah. But The Devil's an, Advocate, which we Devil's covered Advocate. earlier this year. <laughs> but as an actor, he wasn't really taken seriously. He was kind of like a, 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 not a joke, but kind of an afterthought. Yeah, I think he's one of those actors that had a huge, you know, career in the late 90s and early 2000s. And then... But critically, nobody took him seriously. He had some of the best movies. I mean, Point Break, Speed, right. Matrix, Matrix. But I mean, it had been a while since he had like a big hit. But even in Matrix, he's not regarded as a world class actor. No. I mean, yeah. In John Wick, he's kind of like he finally emerges as, "Hey, I'm a good actor." Yeah. He's the focal point and, of the film, in, and in a to way me, that... he becomes an A lister with John Wick. He may have been like a A minus for, uh, and he was probably A plus because he was. You know, I mean, Trilogy he's a so name huge. that you know. Of yeah. Course. But in terms of like the whole, like, we touched on earlier about, no, he's respected among, you know, his crew, everything. But as an actor, I don't think he was taken seriously. Yeah. I, I, I know what you're trying to say, and I, I, I get it. I think that because of some of that, that slump it's kind that of in the middle of his career. The whole Bill and Ted's and, and, and stuff in the middle. Yeah. yeah. Um, this was kind of a renaissance for Keanu and brought us into a new stage of his career. And I personally really love it. But, you know, like like we said, he's always had a really positive reputation within the industry as being incredibly kind, incredibly and generous, I, incredibly professional. I, I think a lot of his appeal you know, to movie movie goers is he is genuinely likable. Yes. He's a likable person. You want him to do well. Yeah. But as an actor... And that's one of the I, things, too, that like the directors of this movie were talking about in some of the bonus footage is that Keanu has never played a character that's, like, wholly bad or wholly good or just... There's a lot of dimensions to the characters that he plays, and he was not going to bring make John Wick just a very one-dimensional, like, you know, the boogeyman totally focus on the action there's there's depth there so kind of funny um to talk about not wholly good not wholly bad reminded me of constantine which yeah. i really like i love constantine and i saw an interview not too long ago that's the one movie he wants to do a sequel yeah. of, and they won't nobody's doing it but he wants to do a sequel to constantine. he really wants to he loves that character but that to me is a good movie yeah i have a shirt for that constantine. is a better comic book movie than golden army oh blow me Anyway. Also from hell. <laughs> so one of the underrated things that I really like in the film is when they top up, talk about like Baba Yaga, when they put the script on the screen oh, the, to the typography, emphasize. The typography is, is brilliant. Yeah. yeah. The the choice of font, the typography, typography yeah. and the way that they do it for the emphasis, right? They didn't use score, which is a, a common thing and that's fine. It was so unique. It was so it's different. It's a really enough. unique but storytelling since method. Since it's such a visual film, I felt like it worked right. in such a great visual and way yeah. with Obviously my, how they were representing things. My background being graphic design and everything. Yeah. I completely... Yeah, yeah. I know you're drawn to Big things like that. Gravitate yeah. towards it. I, I mean, you bring up music and score, though. One of the things that I think is really unique in this movie, or maybe it's not unique, or, but I think this movie does it better than maybe anybody else. The way that the fight sequences are choreographed to the soundtrack or the, the way that they yeah. really built the music into the action sequences 
yeah. is so good and is so it's kind of like the punches are part of the instruments and yeah. the music. They they land yeah. on the bass hits and right. different things like that. It's very nuanced. You have to pay a lot of attention. Very similar to like Baby Driver. Yeah. Where they choreograph the chase scenes and the different things to to the music. To the yeah. music. It's but I think it's partially because as we you know, as we found out and we know more from the behind the scenes stuff that these directors and the people behind the film they were originally a stunt crew. Yeah. And they learned by doing these little shorts and quick edits and things that they put together for films and test screenings and stuff like that and created their brand by doing that. And it gave them total autonomy to make the movie that they wanted to make. They created the Miss Perkins character or turned her from male to female. Like with the script, they did Mm -hmm. some different things, provide some dynamics to the roles that we didn't see before. And it was... I think I think they just hit home run after home run on this project. Yeah, so Chad Stileski and David Leach are the two directors. Chad is the one who got the director credit on this, but he and David co-directed the film and co-founded the company that was that, you know, the number one stunt choreography company in Hollywood. And David then went on to direct Deadpool 2. He did Atomic Blonde, which is kind of like a female John Wick, which I fucking love that movie. I do too. <laughs> That's a great thing. It's, it's basically a stunt-driven action movie yeah. for stunt people, by stunt people. Yeah. That it also just happens to have a rockin' script. And, and a good story. audiences eat it up, man. And it kind of occurred to me tonight that Again, kind of a new thought. The first 10 minutes of it reminded me of Up. It tells an entire depressing, sad yeah. story that gets you involved in the yeah. first 10 minutes. Yeah. And, and it's you a very really moving, feel for this guy. So that when moving, he, he turns into the Baba Yaga and starts killing everybody, you're like, yes, you fucking take them all out. Because you're just like on his side. Also, I thought, you know, this is an action movie written for females. But let's think about it. The main guy, attractive guy. The reason he's killing is not out of hate or vengeance or money. They is they killed his dog that his wife, his dead yeah. wife, gave him. It pulls on all the heartstrings. Yeah, and like hundred percent. This is a guy killing everybody, and you're actively rooting for him. Every to kill murder was justified. Yeah, everybody, <laughs> and also because he's now like a widow, talking like you know he and now he's available. I, exactly. So that's another like emotional. He's rich, attraction. handsome. He's, he's he can fight. Yeah. Sign me up. And he's sensitive because he's killing for his dog. Yeah. And, it, and again, it wasn't much the dog. Obviously, it was the dog, but it was the, the hope. The, yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, he says it. He said, yeah. that was my last shred of hope. So and they basically said, you know what? He has nothing to live for. He doesn't yeah. care yeah. at this point. And I mean, I know we've sung Keanu's praises here, but I do want to say the supporting cast throughout the movie is fantastic. You get Willem Dafoe, John Leguizamo, um, Alfie Allen, um, Adrian, Adrian Pilecki. I mean. And? And uh, Mayhem. Michael Nyquist, <laughs> Ian McShane, Ian McShane, Ian McShane, yes, Lance Reddick, yeah. See, Ian McShane's a obviously Dean Winters. Way, Gene is, John Wick Two is a much bigger part. But, he is, and yeah. yeah, I like him. Everything he but does too. Man, do I love Ian McShane! I just yeah. want him to read me bedtime stories. Right. Ian McShane can just come and read Curious George. Goes to town for me. His voice is electric when I hear it, and I'm just so happy when he. I just always think there. of Deadpool with him and him like calling everybody cocksucker and shit. <laughs> <laughs> It's a, but, it's a, it's a well done movie. Not elevated dead, Deadwood. Sorry. I was like, I was like, not Deadpool. Deadwood. I'm like, I don't remember. <laughs> like, Did you ever see Deadwood? He said, he said that a lot. Deadwood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was what got me through the first season of American Gods. I haven't gone yeah. back, but we we all watched that together. We already yeah. did, and then never watched. Yeah. It again. Well, they took forever. It was like to four get, years to get season yeah. two out, and we just never wanted to go back. But we, I we can tried. remember thinking that like. Jeez, Ian McShane's a badass, and I just the, love listening to him talk. Wasn't it on FX or like that? Stars. No, Stars. Stars. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This movie has an 86% with critics, 81% with audience, so Makes it's no sense. a little weird that it's flipped, but pretty even. It's, it's ambulance. <laughs> I don't... Everybody has their taste. Yeah. To me, this is a as close to a damn near perfect movie as you're going to get. It has I, everything for me. I love this movie, despite the fact that I have to close my eyes and cover so my ears. So we start off fighting, we end up agreeing. Yeah. What a sweet world we live in. Yeah. <laughs> Francesca does not watch anything having to do with the dog. Yeah. With that, that whole sequence. That's a I tough just, scene. I don't watch it. I'm just glad they didn't like have the dog. Like We got really... like One year later, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right, right, right. really attached to the dog. Yeah. 
Would that have been? Yeah, yeah, that was a tough. It's a quick. It's a tough scene. Yeah. I know. Uh, Very similarly, uh, in the in the movie Shooter, they kill Mark Wahlberg's dog, and that's one of the driving forces for him later. He, he even says it to Michael Pena. I don't think you understand. These boys killed my dog, <laughs> yeah. and that justifies him going on his ballistic rampage and rage, but not with the it's emotional a different hall emotional yeah. yeah baggage attached. Much it better is. movie here. But so what are, for you guys is like your favorite sequence in the movie of all the actions shots? I'll tell you one of my favorite lines. Okay. Is when, um, I forget the, the, the Russian dad's name. Um, Vigo. Vigo. When Vigo calls John Wick, hangs up, what do you say? Enough. Yeah. Yeah. That, and did me, not say a single say word, a word for anybody who has not seen the movie yet. Which I thought was just a great line. Yes. Yeah. Action sequence, the one that got me the most, I thought was really cool. Obviously, the, the, the nightclub. Yeah, that's my favorite. The nightclub is just, the whole shot is incredible. Yeah. One I thought was really kind of cool is that towards the end, he hits the dude with the car. The guy rolls over the roof. As he's rolling over, he's shooting him through the roof. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, that's a pretty uh, ingenious way of doing it's, that. It's pretty great. I really love the introduction to John Wick being about in the house. Right? Yeah. When they send the 35 guys there to kill him. And, then, and that's when you know what you're in for in this movie. It's they're really setting the stage. And yeah. my other my other favorite favorite line and also sets the stage is when Vigo calls um, John Leguizamo's character. Yeah, it's like I heard you punched my son. He's like, yeah. Why'd you do that? Uh, he stole John Wick's car. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh. Yeah. <laughs> like nothing else needs to be said. Yeah. Like that's building like. How big of a badass is John Wick that everybody's afraid of him? Yeah. It was the same with the cop. That was my favorite. Yeah. Like, see, he's like, "Are you working again?" Or he's like, "Yeah, <laughs> okay, just see taking you, John. Care, just taking care of some stuff." Yeah. Bye, Jimmy. And that was. <laughs> but and that, even, it did not even. But every single person he encounters, other than the Russians, has a huge amount of respect for him. Yeah. Yes. He's obviously got some street cred. Not so much Miss Perkins. She's. Well, she was in it for the money. Yeah. She's just greedy. To a t- almost everybody that in the movie, yeah, has a, yeah, even the people that are trying to kill him have respect for him. Yeah, yeah. she respects him. You know, Vigo respects him. Yeah. yeah, he fears him. But there's like, he's obviously earned his, his, uh, yeah, his moniker. Exactly. Absolutely. What did you think about Willem Dafoe looking out for him? Right. That at first he was shooting at Adrian Palicki, and then later shot the other guy. I'm like, man, he's a bad shot. Like at That's first, what like I thought at it, first too, because and I, then, I and then did realizing not that he know. was behind. Yeah, I, I didn't know really until he helps him when he's like prisoner or whatever. Well, I kind of yeah. picked up on it early because I mean, obviously because he moved the sight off his face into the pillow. Right. So you knew he missed intentionally to warn him. But also, if you look back, kind of foreshadowing, he's the only guy at the funeral. Yes. That's true too. Yeah. So he's the only one that. So it shows that kind of bond they have. Because I remember the first time I watched it and he he said to Vigo, like, consider it done or something. And I was like, oh, I guess in this world, like, that doesn't stand for much, like, being the only one at the funeral. But then as it goes along, and I I remember the scene where he shoots the pillow. I was like, is he... uh, My first thought was, does he want to warn him so that he can kill him and he can claim the prize? He can get the money. Yeah, exactly. I had the same thought initially. And and then later I was like, okay, like all he's doing is just following him around. Yeah, just keep an eye on him. He was yeah. his eyes. Yeah, that's all he was doing the entire movie. Just kind of in the shadows. Yeah. I'd love to know more about that. Like, what what brought that bond together? If we could go back in time, a, pre- a prequel. Yeah, yeah, I would like that. I would take that story. Yeah, I would like to. I I could see a John Wick prequel. It doesn't have to be Keanu, where we get somebody like as the badass, as the boogeyman. Like, what what was that like? You know. Yeah, because you know me, I you know, I wanted a Darth Vader prequel series too. So I want to see you be like a he was an orphan and some and and William Defoe's character came and adopted him, became his adopt, adopt, adoptive dad or something. Yeah, and, that, I mean that's essentially Lucky Number Eleven with Josh right. Hartnett and Bruce Wells. But <laughs> you get the idea. Yeah, teach you the trade, figure out like what makes him special, the professional. Exactly that, that too. Yeah, and I do. I mean, we talk a lot about the through the action sequences and the gunfights and stuff, but I think that what's great about this too is that you're not just seeing that he's great with a gun but he is great with his hand like when vigo's like enough with the guns and he (laughs) puts so great with his hands but like when he when vigo at the end it just wants it to be like a fist fight like man to man i was like I, I don't know. There was just something special there and i i thought it was a great fight really well choreographed 
and showed that John Wick's not just about his weapons. Well, I think that's pretty apparent from the get-go. There's a lot of yeah hand-to-hand combat going on yeah. throughout the movie. Well, that, I mean, that's the thing, is that it's not... It's all choreographed together. It's not just... Yeah shoot 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 it's like shoot punch shoot punch punch shoot punch like, with the gun <laughs> yeah yeah hit you with the gun i mean that, that was a really like with the gun yeah. that I just hit, rudimentary yeah. way of saying it but yeah i just that's what we had the business called bang bang punch boom boom <laughs> <laughs> it's a great movie it's a great franchise i'm really excited for the fourth one i think we're we're just i but i agree i i hope that they kind of wrap it up with four now I have to watch two and three again just because. Yeah. So I'm gonna say something that Halle might... Berry. I'm gonna say something that might get me hurt here. Oh uh, God. I'd kind of be okay if John doesn't make it through the fourth. Oh, moment. I will kill you. I'm just saying, like it seems like again he's got nothing left to live for. He has another dog. I'm gonna. He could go out on his shield. And I'm gonna go. A, I'm gonna go one step further for you. Yeah. I'll give you a better ending. He becomes Ian McShane and runs the Continental. Runs the Continental. So who's going to fuck with him at the Continental? I don't know. That's a good it, point. Because I'm sure Ian McShane at one point was a, a master hitman. I think he has to be. I mean, anybody who gets to call John Wick Jonathan, I mean, to become, you got to be a badass. become the, the boss boss, yeah. he'll become... Yeah. Oh, he'll level up then? He'll level up. I don't know. He he was the one who... He give he did give him a head start. He did. Because he, he conducted business on com, on uh, Continental ground, so... It'll get worked out. I don't know. I think that there's something for that ending, though, for him to be able to... Be at peace. I don't. I, I think don't like something it. There. But I could write it; it would yeah. work. I do love the whole world. Yeah, I find it so interesting yeah. that it. I know it's not real, man. I'm assuming it's not real. You never know. Yeah, that whole kind of underworld, even like the the, the politeness of it all, yeah. the rules of it all, the structure. Yeah, there. I find terribly interesting. There's a, a gentlemanly quality to like. These are the worst people. And some of the best people, but I mean, yeah, yeah. There, there's a mutual. There's still a code, right? Yes. Yeah. There's honor, as as we discussed in a few good men. There's a code there, right? <laughs> and it's obviously one. If you break, there's some dire consequences. There's some consequences, yeah, yeah for for real. I oh, speaking of that scene regarding the consequences, that doesn't seem logistically safe to have six people shoot at those right. angles. Like that would, I feel like somebody <laughs> would get ricocheted or crossed. Fired or something that just yeah. Doesn't Are they seem all like, so good it, that they're gonna hit her in the head? Or like, maybe they're just standing offset enough from each yeah. other that it's okay. It just makes for a cool shot. It does visually. make for a cool shot. It does. Yeah. The reality of it is no, you're not gonna have six guys in a circle all shooting. Yeah. I do love <laughs> Ian McShane coming out of the shadows and just saying, "Consider your membership to the Continental Revoked." revoked. And then yeah, it's so good. Anything then he else killed her. On... <laughs> Anything else on John Wick? It's not in this movie, but the scene with him in common, like shooting back and forth at each other through the mall. Yeah. With the little like sneaky like like silencer. That's such a cool little like walk through like shot scene. It is really good. That's a different episode, Frank. It is. <laughs> Ron John we'll get there at some point. One day. Best sequels. <laughs> It'll come around. All right, so next week we're going to have a special guest with us. We are. Frank's brother, William, is joining us as a a fellow movie aficionado, and we're really excited to have him. Willie Willie Staggs in the house. (laughs) What's great about Will is Will is younger than all of us by a number of years, but has more entrenched opinions. (laughs) But has more entrenched opinions than I think we even do about his movies and what he likes. He's very steadfast in his, like, get off my lawn takes. And it's going to be really fun to argue with him about those things. Oh, goodness. Yay. So we did. I think it'll be more one sided for somebody else at this table. Oh, probably. We did say that because he's our special guest, that he would pick the spotlight film for us to discuss next week. Frank, you gave him a category to pick from. What did you give him? So I'm wildly proud of myself for this category. The category. You're always wildly proud of yourself. <laughs> I really am. Nobody loves me like I do. <laughs> uh, for Will, I. Damn, can, okay. Can, can you reach right here? I can get <laughs> anywhere on my back. Just I can start, pat start any patting. which way, shape, or start form. Start patting. That being said, I gave Will the category of, I want you to pick a movie that features a destination that you want to visit. And, and it has to have the word the in it. No. Because you make the best suggestions ever. It does not have to have the word the in it. But what I did say was, is that it does not have to be a real place. 
So if he decided he wanted to go to Narnia, Narnia or (laughs) Tatooine or anything like that, like it doesn't necessarily, it's just a place that you would love to be able to go visit. Okay. Right. Elysium, anything like that. It could have been, it doesn't have to be a real world. I was going to say Elysium because I knew you would say it. That being said, Will did pick a movie that has a place on earth. He did pick the first animated film that we will be reviewing. Oh. As our spotlight feature, he picked Ratatouille. Oh, MG. Because Will has decided he would like to see Paris or France. Uh, not just Paris, but the countryside and the different things part of that. He can see so, your underpants. So we will be <laughs> Sorry, revisiting. That was a very childish did you, did you joke. see London first? Or? <laughs> when he said Paris and then France, my brain just went to the underpants joke from when we were kids. Sorry. <laughs> it's not even London and Paris. It's, it's London, London and France. I see London, I see France. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> All right. I see my 12-year-old wife. Uh, <laughs> Whoa. So <laughs> Pat Oswald, he plays Remy in the film Ratatouille. And uh, we're going to see if I like this movie on the second go-round. Oh. You... Did you not like it the first? Mm-mm. Really? Mm-hmm. It's one of my favorite Pixar movies. I'm with I, you. I don't know if maybe I was just in the wrong mindset when I saw I, it. I uh, remember like nothing of this movie, but I just... <sighs> I'm back to science. We, we we come together. We, no, I'm we, very we, open to watching it, and I'm I actually no, because it has science. so much love. I've wanted to revisit it, just thinking like maybe I was just in the wrong mindset. I just you liked- remember like I had to fight with her, just like Wally. That was I don't know if we see Wally if it's not for the pandemic. Right. Yeah, and, and then it's one of those like it's and my I love it my, so much my week to pick movies. Yeah. Uh, right into it it's... <laughs> which never really comes around very often no it really does it did during the pandemic did. we did quite well so right now right is better than paddington 2 i will kick you out of your own house right now jeremy that is <laughs> i would uh, love to see this criminal <laughs> this no, is no it's not criminal Ratatouille's phenomenal. If, if there's no a, reason if we did a poll i don't think i i genuinely think that you would lose i don't okay that being said, does Paddington have a ride at Epcot? Boom. No. Let me let me drop this. I mean, Paddington doesn't have that Disney money. <laughs> they do not. But that being said, the fact that Disney featured a movie that, if for all intents, I think it's 15 years old right now, 16 yeah. years old, and they just built the attraction. That's the amount of love and consistency that this movie has. That's why I, I bring it. up I think that I'd way. rather see Rakakuni. <laughs> I am, I am not going to spoil that for anybody. That yeah. is a no context spoiler. That is a no context spoiler. <laughs> we cannot say any more about that right now. I'm sorry. You have questions. We have answers. In the future. In the future, we will discuss this. In is another it, world. Is this an ambulance thing? In the future, we will discuss this. In another, in another world. <laughs> so, Ratatouille, next week, special guest. We'll have all new things that we've watched as well. So to recap the episode and the things that we watched and where to find them, Metal Lords is on Netflix. You can see it on there now. For Ambulance, it is currently in theaters. The Walking Dead is on AMC and AMC Plus if you have the streaming service for that. Outer Range is on Amazon Prime for the first two episodes. John Wick was available for rent on YouTube or Amazon Prime. What am I missing? Moon Knight, uh, which is once on again, Plus. Disney Plus. Yeah. Same episode three. Week. Yes. And we will be Ronnie watching Chang Ratatouille on, on Disney Netflix. Plus. Yes. Ronnie Chang on Netflix. That's something that we oh, need yes. to... You guys need to... We'll watch as well. And for anybody else who likes stand-up comedy, because Ronnie Chang is a genius. I don't know if... I think Rogue One is streaming on Disney Plus as well. Is Paddington 2 streaming anywhere? Oh, who, nobody cares. Never no, mind. No, it, it is. So, hold on. <laughs> no, 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 nobody cares, really. No, they really do. They don't. They really do, though. They really don't. Jeremy. Th- this movie has a... Have a great week, everyone. You don't even understand. <laughs> Paddington 2 has some loyal ass For the record, people. I just it's want on to Tubi. say... It's on Tubi. Tubi's free. Oh, Tubi. Free with ads. Free That's with where ads. all the great movies go, to Tubi. Currently, yeah, Gone Girl t- is there as well. Tubi has an excellent selection. They do have quite a wide variety of films. All right, guys. Uh... That is our show. We'll be back next week with our spotlight Ratatouille and our special guest. Um, And hopefully, maybe Frank and I are going to go see uh, tomorrow night the unbearable weight of massive talent with Nick Cage and Pedro Pascal. We're so excited for that. And maybe we're going to catch the Northmen, depending on my work schedule. So I'm really excited. I bet you are. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, talk hard, guys. That's a wrap. 
You've been listening to Big Screen, Little Screen, and everything in between with Francesca, Frank, and Jeremy. With the entertainment space as crowded as it is now, it's nice to have a podcast that doesn't hold back their takes from new releases to older movies and everything in between. We got you covered. We hope you enjoyed the show. We know we had fun. Make sure to like, rate, and review. And until next time, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram. And we can be heard on Spotify, Apple, and iHeart. See you next time on Big Screen, Little Screen, and everything in between.